Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, well, it is still cold. Uh, we made it down to negative eight Fahrenheit last night. I think that's uh, negative 22 Celsius. Going from memory there. Uh, another really late night. Went to bed at 1:30. Up again. Uh, early this morning out here to take care of the stove. So kind of show you. Look around here. Solar panels or wood pile. Lots of snow. Kind of looks like a Martian landscape, especially if I put a red filter on it. So, uh, had a run into town. Uh, we have another storm coming. This one actually is going to bring uh, not cold, it's actually going to heat us up a little bit, which is an answered prayer. Uh, it's also going to bring snow, almost two feet, they say. It's a 50 50 chance right now. The way the warning system works is they issue. Uh, a warning, then they issue an advisory, then they issue a watch, and we're under a warning right now. So that's a 50 50 chance of a uh, significant weather event. Uh, we've gone through lots of snow. Uh, the building's doing fine with snow. We're just letting it pile up on the side there. It was pointed out by one of the uh, subscribers to The Real Martian that that's really going to help us with some insulation on the side. So, yeah heard what you're saying and we're gonna leave that uh, just as it is uh, the building can handle the snow no problem structurally solar panels obviously uh, they are always going to continue to be a problem but I think I got a solution on the way uh, thanks to what all of you guys have been uh, providing so there's the solar panels they're frosted up good but uh, if we had some sunlight uh, it would melt no problem so that's that's all right uh, so really, the, the problem here with HAB1 is power. Everything comes down to power. Uh, everything we want to do takes power. Uh, and it ha power has to be generated somehow, whether it's solar or wind or geothermal or uh, burning stuff. Uh, and we just have limited ability to do that. So we've been fighting this cold problem, right? Uh, trying to figure out how to keep the grow beds from freezing. Uh, the last time I, I spoke to you guys, I was talking about uh, using a propane tank uh, on an Arduino control unit and uh, cycling the unit on and off. And that was kind of like a eureka moment, is I don't have to let it run the whole time, and that will save on fuel. And fuel has two problems, right? It costs money, uh, but you also have the logistics of getting it and then storing it. Um, we live quite a ways away from... Uh, anything really so uh, storage is a problem uh, how much to store all that kind of thing so uh, propane uh, is easily stored could have them drop off a tank uh, it's somewhat expensive relatively speaking of course uh, so the logistics side of that is easy uh, but the safety side uh, is a different story um, the idea I had uh, probably went to uh, worked all that well. Uh, it would have worked, but it wasn't safe. Uh, I, the control unit could have failed and that could potentially lead to an always open condition with the uh, relay I would have used, which could have let the valve stay open, which could allow propane to leak out all over the place uncontrolled uh, without building a lot of safety things into it. So I appreciate uh, subscriber comments and uh, observation there. We're doing this together now, so uh, one team. Uh, so, we got a new solution that we're trying out today. Uh, Wrangler Star let me borrow one of his diesel heaters. Uh, so, let's go and take a look, see how it's going. Hey, there we go. Lots of heat. If only you could feel the heat. This is a temporary setup here that we're using just to get some heat in there and see how well it performs. So, uh, again, it dropped to negative eight. Right now, uh, I think it's about four degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and that is putting us in the building with the heater on now. There it is. 
we're almost back up to freezing. So I, let's look at inside the green, or in the lane here, here we go. Yeah, right, no, you can't see that, sorry. Almost, I need to upgrade to digital. Yeah, almost 90 Fahrenheit right there, just coming in, 30 Celsius. So uh, we're still getting the melt, the rain, everything uh, is working. So I really like this idea. I'm not convinced yet of the final solution as far as fuel goes. Now I looked online last night. They certainly sell uh, these heaters as both uh, diesel or propane. So I'm welcome to all your guys' feedback. Uh, if I, you know, which one I should go with. Here are my thoughts. Kind of alluded to it earlier is I could have a propane company come up here and they could drop off, um, they could drop off a tank, and we could use that uh, as a, as the fuel supply and storage. I'm worried with negative temperatures of valves and everything freezing up. I haven't looked at the freezing point of liquid propane, but I think that we're probably pretty close to it, especially if we're consuming a lot of it per hour. As it speeds up, it's gonna cool down going through those valves. Uh, and I don't think that's probably, I don't know, I gotta go check. So, welcome to comments on that one. Uh, the bad side about it, I have to go buy a bunch of propane hose. I have to run hose all over the place. I'm worried about that hose uh, freezing up as well. Once I put it on the ground, uh, it's all going to get buried in snow, um, and then if it does get frozen, you're going to have to dig it all up. If you dig it up with a shovel, you might cut it. You got some safety issues there. So I'm not so certain that propane is the way to go, but I like the idea of not having to go get fuel all the time, which leads us to diesel. Uh, the diesel power, uh, has, diesel has more BTU per gallon than propane does. I think it's 100. 118,000 BTU per gallon of diesel versus 94,000 something like that BTU for propane uh, for equivalence. Uh, and that means that we can get more heat by burning less diesel than as compared to propane. Propane, we'd have to burn more propane to get the equivalent amount of heat out of it as we would diesel. So uh, I really like that because that equals uh, less time filling it. Uh, and less work for me, as you know, time is a big factor for me, so uh, propane still seems to be kind of easy, I don't know, it's a, it's a hard trade study. Um, I like the diesel because it's safer, there's no running propane that could accidentally leak all over the place, it's contained, uh, the diesel goes right underneath these uh, uh, heaters, so shouldn't have any problem there. Carbon monoxide, uh, carbon dioxide, of course the CO2 is great for the plants, carbon monoxide not so great for us, so I will be, uh, when I'm doing my phase two work, which I desperately need to get to and get through these storms, unfortunately it keeps taking me away. Um, when I get to my phase two work, I'll be putting in temperature sensors, O2 sensors, CO2 sensors, pH sensors, um, also have, uh, I'll put in a carbon monoxide sensor and a humidity sensor. Um, some of you have asked how come I'm not telling you the temperature in all the lands. It's simple. I haven't gone and bought a digital thermometer to put in here because I have a whole bunch of thermometers that I'm going to be attaching to the Arduinos and I uh, don't want to go waste more money. I just need to go and actually build the darn units and uh, write the code. So uh, that's why I'm not listing all of the uh, temperatures is because I don't have them all. I'm excited about phase two because I got to have all that uh, information will be deposited on a server and I can watch it graphically and I see how things change and I can validate my thermodynamic models and improve them uh, based on real world. So I'm excited about that. Uh, I just need to get to it. So anyway, here's uh, kind of summing it up. Sorry, that was just a stream of consciousness there. Um, what we're looking at right now is a solution where I would go buy two uh, forced air heaters. Uh, significantly smaller than 150,000 BTU. As I said before, we only need we only need 20,000 BTU per hour in each of the lanes to keep it above freezing on the coldest days. So uh, I think they sell them at 50,000 BTU level. They're about $120, $150 a piece. That's fairly reasonable. 
Uh, so I could go get those, put one into each lane, one in this lane, one in that lane, um, and do a hybrid solution. Uh, since these are electronically controlled, uh, the ignition system is electronically controlled, they have safety overrides. Uh, I really like the solution, but I'm going to hybridize it um, because I do want to be able to control these heaters from anywhere on the planet. If something goes wrong, I want to be able to hit an override button on my Arduino or you know control system through my Android uh, and be able to tell it, hey, turn on. Uh, so I am going to hook up an Arduino and a relay to it as part of the environmental control automation that I'm putting in place. Uh, I like it. Now it's just a matter, what do you think, propane or diesel? That is the question. I'll finalize uh, with this. Uh, I've, you know, it's easy to get your head down uh, at times like this. It's, <laughs> it's really freaking easy. Trust me. Uh, you know how many hours I put in out here trying to uh, build this system, make everything work, and then have things like this happen. Uh, a lot of you might be thinking, well, how come you didn't think about that first? Uh, you know, it's simple. It's because there's a lot to think about. It took a year's worth of design just to get to this point. And honestly, we we're at the point of, well, if we don't build it, no one's going to come. Feel the dreams reference in case you didn't get it. Um, yeah, basically it came down to show me. You know, show me this thing working and uh, maybe we can help you out. Maybe we can get you some money. But if, it, if there wasn't anything here, if it was just a bunch of engineering drawings, if it was just a bunch of simulation, which I have, and I did, no one cared. The money makers, they didn't care. Because it's just an idea and they get ideas all the time. They wanted to see action. So we're here because we 100% believe in what we're doing. Some of you think we're, we're gonna fail. Hey, it's gonna be fun TV, I guess, but we're not planning on failing. I'm not planning on failing. So what I wanted to say is, in this cold temperature, I did not design prototype one, have one to go to this low temperature. But we had a 30 degree delta T. That's a, a change in temperature from inside of the tent, the grow lane, to the outside world on a negative eight day. I think a 30 degree delta T is fantastic. It's not good enough, but for what it was, for the amount of time it's taken us to get here, and for the amount of time that we've had to put this all together, you know. I guess we'll use the Apollo 13. This is a successful failure. Uh, we learned a lot. We're learning how to optimize the system efficiently. Uh, and the, the ideas that we put in place, the uh, tents to help keep heat in. Some of you wonder why we have plastic over. That's to help keep heat in. Um, it actually kind of, the idea was, here's a tent, here's an air dead space, and there's uh, the outer uh, space, right? So that was kind of the idea uh, of why we did that. But anyway, 30 degree delta T, that's pretty awesome. Uh, but we've got to do better. So we're going to be working on that. So I'm not as dejected anymore. You know, I was really down. Um, I think we have hope. I think we're going to make it, folks. I really do. So thanks, thanks for watching. Thanks for making it this far with us. Uh, if you enjoy what you're seeing, tell your friends. You know, we're on our, our way up to 20,000 subscribers trying to get there. Um, the money that we're getting uh, from advertisements and all that, if you are clicking and helping us out, we really appreciate it. Because I'm going to use that to help buy the things that you guys are all talking about you want me to try. So uh, we appreciate your support. Hey, thanks everybody at Mission Control. Hope you have a great day. This is The Real Martian. Talk to you later.